Should you keep your camera gear in a dry cabinet? Unfortunately, there's no simple yes or no answer. It really depends where you live. For the first 42 years of my life, I lived in the UK and I've never had any problems with mold or fungus or rust. And when I left the UK, I just put my, my film gear in my parents' attic. 14 years later, I picked it up and it was all still fine. No problems at all. I left the UK to go to Southeast Asia and my first port of call was Singapore, which is extremely humid. I was staying with my brother in a service department and there were wooden wardrobes and the, the doors of these wardrobes were so warped through humidity that you couldn't close them. I then moved to Thailand, which has similar high humidity, not as bad as Singapore, but a lot higher than the UK. Whenever you get into a discussion about humidity, you will hear the term relative humidity. It's a term I've used for a long time, but so I didn't really know what it meant. And I guess a lot of people are the same. And when I started to look at what it meant, some of the explanations I read were quite confusing. By the time I got my head around it, I thought I could explain it a little easier. So that's what I'm going to try to do here. In a room, it doesn't matter what the, the external temperature is, there will be air. And in that air, there will be water vapor. Now, if it was possible to extract all of the water vapor from the air and put it into a bucket, the absolute humidity would be the weight of the water over the total volume of the air. And I've seen this expressed as grams of water per cubic meter or milligrams of water per liter. I think that's quite easy to understand. Temperature doesn't play a part, but unfortunately, absolute humidity is very rarely used. What is used is relative humidity, and that's what I'll go on to next. The figures I'm using in this example are completely made up. Uh, they're not accurate, and I'm just using them to try to explain the concepts of relative humidity. Air can contain water vapor, and warm air can contain more water vapor than cold air. So what we've got here are two rooms of the same size, one in a hot climate and one in a cold climate. And let's say that the air in this room can contain four cups of water vapor, but the air in this cold room can only contain two cups of water vapor. Relative humidity is expressed as the actual amount of water vapor in the air over the maximum possible amount of water vapor in the air if the air was fully saturated and it's expressed as a percentage. If you see a relative humidity reading of 50%, what it means is that the water vapor in the air is 50% compared to the maximum amount of water vapor that those air molecules can contain. And for this example, I said that in this room in the hot climate, it's possible to saturate the air with four cups of water. Therefore, 50% 50, 50 relative humidity means that there's two cups of water vapor in the air. However, in the cold climate, I said that the maximum saturation point was two cups of water. So a 50% relative humidity reading here means that there's only one cup of water in the air. So what that means is that if you have the same relative humidity, depending on the temperature, there can be a different amount of water vapor in the air. I'm not sure whether that was easy to understand or not. It's actually quite an easy concept to understand, but, but it's quite difficult to explain. But basically, hot air can contain a lot more water vapor, which is why when you go to hot countries, they always feel so humid and uncomfortable. 
I arrived with virtually no gear because I left all my old film gear in the UK. All I had was a small point and shoot digital Sony camera. But then I started to build a DSLR system. And back in 2004, DSLRs were quite expensive. My, my 10D was a, a very expensive camera. And I was staying in a, a rented apartment and security was an issue because I knew that other people had keys. So my first solution was to buy a safe to keep the, ca the camera in. And inside the safe, I put in one of these small desiccant boxes to absorb humidity. This was a bad move for several reasons, which, I, which I'll explain now. Firstly, I found out later that when tires rob houses, if they see a safe, they'll just take the safe and then they'll, they'll cut off the hinges with an angle grinder. And having a desiccant box inside the safe wasn't a very good idea either. There's no way you can control the humidity. It's either going to be too dry, or if the box gets full of water and you forget to change it, it's going to be too wet. So a little later, I decided that the, the best solution was to buy a proper dry cabinet. And in this video, I'll explain a few things and take a look at the cabinet. These cabinets come in various sizes. I've seen ones as small as 20 litres and some big ones are 180 litres. And you can probably find larger ones if you need them. This one is 90. And my first piece of advice is to always buy a cabinet larger than you think you need. When I went out to buy this one, I was just going to buy the 60 litre model. And my wife said, you should get the 90. I was, I was quite surprised to get the advice from her. And she was dead right. Within no time at all, this one had been completely filled up. And now I need a bigger one or an additional one. So if you're not quite sure about what size you need, go for a, a larger model rather than a smaller one. Uh, right, let's take a, a close look at the cabinet. There are quite a few reflections in this room off the glass, so I hope you can see it's okay. This is the uh, control panel. So what we have are two readings for the relative humidity and the temperature inside the cabinet. We have a light switch which illuminates the display panel and also illuminates the inside of the, the cabinet. And here we have a set button and a down and up arrow. So if you want to adjust the relative humidity to another setting, just press the set button and then go up or down. The recommended humidity for camera gear is 40 to 50%. So I've actually got mine set to 45. And you can see at the moment that the, the relative humidity inside the cabinet is 43. Let's take a look inside the cabinet and in this 90 litre unit there are four sections and there are some quite nice moulded foam shelves for lenses and this one just about contains all of my current camera gear. If I, if I buy much more I will need a larger cabinet. This may sound a bit dumb but before I got the unit I wanted to know what it did with the water that it removed from the air. I've got a number of air conditioners in the house and each one needs a pipe that goes outside to get rid of the water that it removes from the air. And if you buy one of the standalone dehumidifiers for your house, there's a container that fills up with water. And once it's full, it switches the machine off and you need to throw the water away. And there's nothing like this with a, a dry cabinet. The, the water that it removes from the air inside the cabinet just seems to be vaporized and then goes and then sent outside the cabinet. So there, there's no pipe needed and there's no reservoir to empty. Returning to the question of whether you need to keep your camera gear in a dry cabinet, if you live in a temperate country, and there are no obvious problems from humidity, you probably don't need to. Where I live now, in Southeast Asia, it's absolutely essential. I've recently had to replace three toilet bowls because all of the internal metal fittings went rusty and cracked the ceramic. 
I've seen fungus to grow on wooden surfaces for no reason. I had a fridge that went completely rusty for no reason. And I have a fish pond now that I'm having to fill up every three or four days with hundreds of litres of water because there is so much water lost through evaporation and that water is just going into the air. And this high humidity can cause lots of problems with e electronic equipment, so I think it's essential. If you're not sure, there's, there's no harm in getting one of these. They're fairly inexpensive, they're quite cheap to run, and it will give you peace of mind that your camera gear is being stored at the, the optimum humidity level. One more thing to add is that I don't store the camera I use every day in the dry cabinet. It seems that if you use equipment regularly, even in high humidity conditions, there isn't a problem. It's only a problem with that equipment that gets stored away for long periods of time without being used. If the humidity is high, then it can get inside and cause problems with mold and fungus and even rust. Well, I hope it's been useful. If there's any questions or comments, please leave them below and please consider subscribing to the channel and there will be another video soon. Thanks for watching.